They're between 14 and 16 years old. Social life is a dominant interest. Every school class has several groups or cliques. This boy's name is Rod Hunter. An unusually popular adolescent, he's a three-letter athlete, he's intelligent, and comes from a family with good income and high social prestige. Rod is the leader of the clique, which dominates the social life of the school. Here's Ben, a boy whose background could be described as lower class. But his exceptional talent, his intelligence, his determination, and his social know-how have all brought him almost total acceptance among the clique. Psychologists call him a climber. Then there's the middle case, Susie Summers. She belongs to the clique and has lots of friends. She doesn't enjoy quite the same popularity as Rod, perhaps because she has close rivals with her elder sister and lacks a sense of security. And the exception to the general rule, the voluntary isolate, Peter McGibbon, the boy who doesn't really want to get into the clique and is happy following his own pursuits. Our fringe case, Marion Ellsworth. She seems to qualify for acceptance by the clique, though somehow she hasn't quite made it. But let's watch these teenagers in action. Mm, I don't know. Hey, That's it? Hello, Hi. Jamie, sit down. Hi. Oh, Susie, I can hardly wait till Saturday night. I got the cutest new dress to wear to your party. Oh, I just love it. What's it like? Oh, it's blue and it's got a ring. Boy, the wheels are sure buzzing today. You think nothing ever happened around the school except what they do? We'll be hearing about that party for a week. Oh, you have to admit, how anything does happen except the things they run. Mm -hmm. I'll be glad to get out of this school where one bunch runs everything. What party are you talking about? Don't tell me you haven't heard. Susie Summers is giving a party Saturday night for the social set of our class. I thought you'd be asked, Marion. We used to know Susie real well, and you live in the same street and everything. We used to get together when we were in junior high. But I haven't seen her much lately. Well, she'll probably ask you. I heard her asking Ben. Maybe she won't ask Marion. I heard she was giving all the invitations out today. She must have asked just about everybody already. Well, it's for sure that you and I won't be asked. Hey, Clara, listen, let's get some kids together Saturday night, you know, and go to a movie. Gee, I wonder if Susie will ask me. You haven't heard it? You mean to tell me that you haven't heard it? <laughs> no, I haven't heard it. Here, play it. It's really terrific, Susie. When you hear it. Excuse me, ladies. I have a special request. No. <laughs> Kids in that gang sure have a lot of fun. If Susie asked me to her party, maybe I could get into more of their doings. I bet she will ask me. After all, we used to be good friends. I wonder who she's asked. If she's asked Ben, she's sure to ask me. Her parents don't even know his parents. And he lives in that slummy part of town. Rod'll go for sure. He's terrific. I wish I knew how to be friendly, like Susie. I wish I wasn't so shy. I never know what to talk about. Hey, look at the time. I gotta get home. Yike, come on. Are you coming, Marion? I think I'll stay and finish my coke. Bye, Marion. Bye. Hey, give me 
another dime, eh? Quick. Oh, oh here, I've got one. Marion, I didn't know you cared. Here, are you sure you can afford a whole dime? What kind of dopey music's that? Oh, I'm sorry, I... Nobody listens to that crummy band anymore. Ben, you coming? Yeah, I'm with you, man. Oh, would you care to minuet? <laughs> Hi, Marion. Hi, Susie. I guess I goofed. Oh, don't mind, Ben. Hey, Marion, I want to ask you something. Some of the kids are coming over Saturday night. Soon, if you want to ride home, you better hurry up. Dad's waiting for us outside. Oh, gee, wait for me. I'll be right there. Oh, Marion, I'll call you tonight. Hi, Mother. You're late today. I was having a coke with some of the gang. The vegetables are done, dear. Would you mash them for me? Eric, I think it's time Danny went home. His mother will be wondering where he is. What time is it, Mrs. Ellsworth? It's time to go home, Danny. Mother, I was wondering whether I could have some of the gang over some night for a little while. Marion, a bunch of teenagers with one of those noisy record players, and they'll want something to eat. Really, Marion, it's all I can do to keep the house clean and the family fed without parties for teenagers. A lot of the kids have parties, and their parents don't mind. Susie Summers is having a party this Saturday night, and she said she'd ask me. But if I don't have them over here once in a while, well, they'll think it funny, and they won't ask me to their parties. Marianne, it takes a big house and a lot of money to hold a party for a lot of teenagers. It wouldn't have to be very many. No, I'm afraid not, Marianne. It's too much work and worry and money. Hi, Dad. Hi, son. Hello, dear. Hi, Marion. What's too much work and worry and money? Oh, Marion has some idea about having a bunch of teenagers over some night. And I told her after a long day, I haven't the strength to cope with all the food and everything. It wouldn't be any trouble for you, Mother. I could make sandwiches. And besides, it costs money to feed all those young people. You don't seem to mind when Eric brings home all his friends. You feed them and you don't mind the work them. Boys are a lot easier to cope with than girls. Some of those girls in your class come from real fancy homes. And you can bet they'd notice everything here and go right home and tell their families. Well, I'm not having those girls in here unless I can do things properly. Certainly won't entertain with just a few sandwiches. I'd have to bake and go to a lot of trouble. Mother, you don't understand. The kids don't expect their mothers to go to a lot of trouble. They just want Cokes and stuff like that. Evelyn, maybe Marion's got something there. Those kids don't want you to fuss. They like informality. Mal, you're a man. You have no idea the work that goes into the simplest party. You'd better wash up now. I'm ready to serve dinner. More pie, Marion? No, thank you, Mother. I have to watch my weight. What nonsense. The way you girls carry on about your weight. It's a wonder you have any energy at all. Here. I don't want you getting sickly and thin. How are you getting along at school these days, Marion? I don't mean your schoolwork, I mean the social life. Susie Summers is having a party this Saturday, Dad. She all but invited me this afternoon, but she said she'd telephone me tonight. Well, that's wonderful. Sounds like a lot of fun. She's going to call tonight? That's what she said. Oh, it's no trouble for the Summers to entertain. They've got a big house. Can I go now, Mom? Yes, Eric. Run along. You haven't seen much of Susie lately, have you? I used to think you two were great pals. I know. I seem to have gotten out of touch with the gang somehow. Actually, I was kind of surprised when Susie mentioned her party to me. But I guess she still feels we're friends. Of course she does. Mother, may I be excused? I have some homework to do. Yes. But take your dishes to the sink and save me some work. Uh, I'll call you when the phone rings. Thanks, Dad. More coffee, Mal? Thanks. I hope to goodness Susie Summers remembers to call. You know, Evelyn, it does seem that Marion's left out of the gang more and more lately. Maybe it'd do her some good to have a little party. Hmm? Nothing elaborate. Say, it's about six or so. I know we haven't much space, but a few kids around for an evening couldn't be much trouble. 
listen now. Why are you getting so excited all of a sudden about Marion's social life? She's just a child. She's nearly 16. She's almost a young woman. She ought to know how to talk to boys. Be at ease when she's with people. I ain't thinking it'd help her out. Give her some background if she could have her friends here. We seem to get along all right without entertaining everybody in town. Why do we suddenly have to start having all of Marion's friends in? And that's another thing. Why don't we have some of our friends over once in a while? Seems to me that the only time we ever entertain is the family party at Christmas or when one of the relatives comes to town. What's got into you, Mal? Well, I'll tell you, Evelyn. I saw little Susie Summers on the street the other day. Well, you know, I haven't seen her for quite some time. Believe me, she's turned into a very lovely young lady. Well, frankly, I'd like to see our little girl looking more like that. Don't get me wrong, Marion's a wonderful kid. But she seems awfully quiet lately. I think she studies too much. I can remember kids like that back in school. And it seems to me they were always the ones who didn't seem quite to fit in with the others. I just want Marion to grow up so that she can make friends, that's all. I suppose what you mean is you don't want her up like me. No. No, Evelyn, that isn't what I mean at all. I know you, and I understand you, and I like you just the way you are. But, well, you know you are shy, and some people don't appreciate you until they get to know you. Life would be easier for Marion if she could make friends faster. I suppose you're right, Malcolm. To tell you the truth, I'm scared to have Marion's friends over here. Those girls are so poised and well-dressed. I can remember girls like that when I went to school. They always seemed to be sneering and giggling at me. I never knew how to act or what to say or how to dress. Evelyn, I didn't mean to upset you like this. Have some more coffee. No, no thanks, Mal. I, I've had enough. It's different with boys. You give them a glass of milk and a piece of pie and it's all the same to them. Evelyn, I know how you feel, Mal, but Marion... The most successful people weren't always the most popular kids. Remember Tom Davis back in the days at school? He was always on the fringe of things, the way you say Marion is. But he's the most popular and successful man in our class now. Yes, I remember. But somewhere along the line, Tom learned to get along with other people or he wouldn't be the community leader he is today. I think all of us want to get along with other people. That's why I think Marion would be better off if she were in the gang. All right, Mal. Maybe I could arrange a little party for her. But I'll need your help. I think I will have some more coffee. Well. Now all we have to worry about is whether Susie Summers is going to call or not. Now where'd that extra man come from? Oh gee, I almost forgot Marion Ellsworth. I didn't even think of her until I saw her this afternoon. Susie, you're not going to invite her. Why, she doesn't even belong to your gang. Those queer clothes she wears. I felt kind of sorry for her today. If she doesn't smarten up, she's going to grow up to be just like her parents. You know, that Marion's mother and father never seem to get asked any of the parties given by the grown-ups around here. Well, Jay, I think it's mean that we should take it all out on Marion. Well, she can't help it if her parents are kind of unfriendly. She even said her parents won't let her have kids in the house. I still say she'll spoil the party. Well, it's my party, and I'll ask whoever I want. Marion and I used to be good friends in junior high. I feel as if I ought to ask her. After all, she just lives down the street. You better make sure you haven't got too many on the list already. Mother said we only have room for 14. Well, I haven't nearly that many. Two, four. Wow, 17 already. I have to take off four, that's all. And you won't be able to invite Marion Ellsworth, that's for sure. Well, I'm going down and ask Mother if we can't have a few more than 14.
Mother? What is it, Marion? Was that the phone? No, dear, I'll call you. Sunday, why don't we go over to the park? There's lots more room over there. Hey, Dopey, I'm expecting a phone call. It's time you were in bed anyway. Oh, keep your shirt on. That was just my sister. For you, Malcolm. Marion. Marion. Yes, Mother. It's time to go to bed. Yes, Mother. The party that Marion wants to go to so desperately is not important in itself, but it is important as a symbol. Marion was rejected today, and the experience could influence her personality and development. If she felt accepted and therefore assured, like Rod Hunter, the whole pattern of her life would be different. If she didn't care about social life, like Peter McGibbon, she wouldn't judge her own worth by an invitation to a party. If she had an attractive personality like Ben and her family's help, she could be a successful social climber, maybe even get into the clique. The degree of social acceptance that each teenager experiences leaves its mark on his personality pattern. Lack of social acceptance can leave emotional scars. And that's why for Marion, today's rejection is important. Time and experience will be on her side. She can do much herself. But is it not a job for parents too? What can they do? <laughs> 